Hello and welcome to the Rigamator version 1.0 walkthrough. Today we're going to be learning how to use Rigamator. We're going to learn how to build a rig, extract an animation, and then apply an animation to a character. So firstly, let's walk through this template folder that you should have downloaded. So the template folder contains this character. This character was created by me and is now yours. You can use it for commercial projects, non-commercial products, tests, whatever you like is yours. And you'll be receiving all the original files for that so you can change it, play with it, whatever you like. You'll then also get the Geeky Man comps. These comps have already been pre-created so you don't have to do anything. The first one is the Geeky Man Unrigged, that is just the character itself. Completely unrigged with any tool. We then have the Geeky Man Rigged, this is the character rigged with Juic Basil. We then have the Geeky Man Running, this is the character's running animation applied to the character. And then we have the Geeky Man Rigamator Running, and this is the character after the Rigamator has been applied to it, and this is what we're going to end up at the end of the tutorial. So the first thing that I like to do, and the reason why these comps are set up like this, is whenever I finish a stage of doing a character, I always duplicate the comp. So you're not destructively editing your work. This is a better workflow. Yes, it can make the files larger, but it's a better workflow to work non-destructively. It means you can have a little bit more flexibility between going back and forth between different sets that you've made. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to focus on the Geeky Man Rigged and the Geeky Man Running, because this is where most of our stuff exists. So the first thing that we want to do when we get to Rigamator is we want to create a rig. To create a rig we're going to left click on the load button and this is going to open a character pose check. The pose check is basically saying hey look at our character, is our character in its basic pose? This basic pose is where all the limbs are stretched out. Hopefully you should have watched the tutorial video where it explains this in a bit more detail. As our character is in the basic pose we can go through this step. So, this is our character, Geeky Man Rigged. Left click, say yes, the character pose is correct. Then we're going to select our rig. So, our rig is actually created with Juic. So, in this example, we're going to select Juic. Click Juic and click OK. Great. Now we're in the controller setup. So, with Juic, the controller setup is pretty much automatic. And if for every reason it's not automatic, I'll show you how to do that. So, we're going to click on the head. This is going to automatically find all the pieces for our head, and we can click OK to save it. This can be saved. Now then, if you was to click a piece, and it was to say none on any of these properties, and you didn't know which one to select, come out of this menu, go into the guide, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll actually see under Juic Controller all the pieces that need to be selected for the right controller. So you can just copy and paste all of this, paste it into a Word document or whatever you like, and just reference it if it's not automatically finding them. Okay, so we can left click on the load button to load our rig. We can say that the character pose is correct. We can then say yes on Juic. We can then come into our controller setup. So we can go through each piece of this and say that it's okay. I know that this is already gonna find it. So we have the right hand, the shoulders, the left hand, the spine, the spine curve, the right foot, the hips, the left foot. You also have the option to add a joystick controller, but as this character doesn't have a joystick, we don't have to worry about this. So then we're going to go on to the next step, and it's going to ask us if we want to save the rig. Now then, I strongly, strongly recommend that you do save the rig, so I'm just going to call this Geeky Man. And click OK, that's going to save the rig and build all the nodes for our character. Once this is finished, we'll go on to the next step. Right, that is our character. And now we have all our nodes in the comp. Remember, the nodes are always locked. They're visible, but they're guide layers, so they won't be rendered. Also note that all the nodes have markers. Do not delete these markers as they contain vital information for the script to work. If you was to say, for example, delete one of these nodes, go back into the load view, Shift click on the load, say yes, my character is in the right pose, select the geeky man, and click OK. This will build any of the nodes what we're missing. As you can see, head has been recreated. 
and it will tell you the error for any nodes what haven't been created because they already exist. I know these already exist, so it's not really an error in my case. Then you can click OK, and you'll go back onto the next step again. So now that we have our character and all its nodes, we need to get the animation from our character. In this scene, the character doesn't have any animation. So actually, we can't really do anything here. Before this step, what I would normally do is I would create my nodes, and then I would duplicate the, the Geeky Man rigged, and then I would create my animation on the controllers. In this case, I haven't done that, as this is a tutorial, so we've added the nodes at this step. We come into our Geeky Man running. So our Geeky Man running is actually just a duplicated comp of the Geeky Man rigged. So the position is actually exactly the same, it's just now animated. And when you come in here, select all the controllers and click U, you'll be able to see that. Now, as I know this is exactly the same as this character, what I can actually do is unlock these nodes, make sure they're all unlocked, select all the nodes, copy them, lock them back up, come into our Geeky Man running, and paste. Once we've pasted them, paste them, bring them to the bottom of the comp, and then lock them. Now we have our nodes from our character on the Geeky Man running. And this is why I say that you should duplicate comps before you add animations, or before you do anything really, every time you've completed a main step, duplicate it, because then you always have this option of being able to grab all the information from this character and just copy and paste it, because they're the same. Now that we've done that, we now have our nodes in this comp. We have to come back over to the Rigimator, click the load stage, and we have to load the nodes from this comp. So to do that the quickest way is by clicking command or the control key and then clicking the left click button on your mouse. Or keyboard or touchpad or whatever you're using. Now we need to select a view for the character. So this view for the character is the right pose. So it's very important that you select the right view because all additional animation templates that you create will be based on that view and will only be selectable via that view. So we're going to click on the right. Now that we're in the right, we can collect one of the controllers. Now I know that I want the entire run from this character, so actually I want to be able to select all of the controllers. As you can see, these are individual controllers. But if we come down to the bottom one, it will say all, and that's a selection of all the controllers. We're going to select this. We're then going to scroll back up so I can see my controllers. It's just my personal preference. It doesn't matter where you are or where you're scrolled to on the timeline. Literally, all you have to do is come over to your Rigimator, click the little plus button down in the left-hand corner. When you click it, you'll be able to add the animation template file and give it a name. So in this case, we're going to call it Character Run. Now, you also have an option to add a folder or select one of the folders in your directory. Now, as this is a fresh install, there's nothing there, and I don't want to add a folder. But if I wanted to, I could click New Folder and add a folder name. I could call this something like Bear Studios Tutorial. What this would do is it would add a folder, Bear Studios Tutorial, and then add the character run template inside that folder. I don't want to do that, so I'm literally just going to click None. We're then going to click OK. What this is going to do is going to run through and it's going to grab the entire animation for my character and save it as a template folder. Now the template folder name will be character run, but as our character was a Duic rig and we selected that in a previous step, it will be saved under character run inside our view. This is important because when you're trying to apply, say, a limber rig to a Duic character, the effect controls these here under the controller, are not copied over. The animation will still be there, but you can't modify the control controller effect settings. So now that we have our character run, that's great. But let's say, for example, also, you had two runs, or you had something else that you wanted to copy, or you had another animation in here. What you could do is you could actually select the keyframes that you would like to copy. So I'm copying half the run here, so this is going to be just half the run. I'm going to then save this as an example. You don't have to do this. Character run half. If I spell half correctly, that'd be great. We can then add this animation in, and this is going to take half of the animation. 
and we're going to give it a few seconds to process this animation and run through and do all the lovely things that it does for us. Once we've got this animation, it's going to be added into our view. Like I said, this is an additional step. You don't have to do this. It's just an example pro pu purposes. If you want to try it, by all means, go for it. Okay, brilliant. So that's been added in as well. So now we're going to apply this animation to a character. As this character is already animated, I don't want to add this animation to this character. Now then I could, and what it would do is it would ignore these keyframes and start working off the animation keyframes. I don't want to do that for now. What I want to do is I want to be able to apply this to a fresh character with nothing on it. So this is my geeky man rigged, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this comp. I'm going to give it the number of five, and we're going to call it geeky man rigged. Change it to geeky man rigamata, and then we're going to put an underscore and call it user. User being yourself, so this is your own version, so you know. We're going to double click it and open it, and what you'll see is you'll have the exact same character you had as the rig step. We're going to go into our load menu to make sure that we load this character from this comp. Command or Windows click on the load button, have our character again. We're going to go into the view step, what is the view? We're then going to click into the all, and then you have our templates that we saved earlier. We're then going to run over to say two seconds, it doesn't matter, but it will always be based off wherever you put your playhead. So if you put it at two seconds, the animation that you apply will start at two seconds. We don't have to select any of the layers inside the comp, as we've already selected everything through Rigamator. Then we're going to click on our character run, and we're going to apply it using the nulls. This is, for me, better, as solids can sometimes take a little bit longer to RAM preview. It's yeah, just my preference, maybe it's all in my head and I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's for me. So we're going to add it via the nulls button. When we click this, this is going to add all of the nulls to our comp from the animation template. So we're going to click this and watch it build our character. If you're ever wondering what stage you are or what's going on, you can look at the little loading bar and it's telling you what it's building and what's going on. It's kind of interesting, but it's only there for a visual effect. Once this is finished, you'll be then left with your comp with your new animation. As you'll see, your character will jump to that animation. The reason our character is jumping to that animation, by the way, is because in the settings, I have the auto connect controllers ticked. If I didn't have this tick, then what it would do is it wouldn't jump to the animation, I would have to do it manually. Now inside our layers, we have all of these A controller name and then the animation template name inside. So what the A stands for, it stands for animation, this is an animation no, what the left hand stands for is what controller, so you can select them. Because you can customize these, these have keyframes in them. So you can say, for example, if I didn't like this keyframe, you, you could move that. They're fully customizable. You then have the character run, and this is a reference for you, is if you was ever to delete an animation from a character, you select the same animation that's on the character. So here we know it's the character run, it's character run. We can then click delete and it will remove it you do not delete from the actual layers themselves. So now that our run has been applied, I'm just going to open up all of these animation nulls and you can see that the animation has been applied from where we were in the timeline. Before this nothing happens, as there's no loop in, it's just looped out. If I play it from this time, you'll see that our animation is exactly the same as the animation was applied to our character. Now, inside your original controllers, if I scroll down and grab the controller of the hand, you'll get a new effect. This effect is called P. P stands for parent. And it'll be right hand and character run. Exactly the same thing as the animation, so you know what they're connected to. The first thing is you get a target. And this target is telling you this layer, hey, what layer am I copying? You can change this but I would advise you not to, as sometimes changing it could end up in expression errors, not always the best. 
If it's a hand, for example, then switching it from the left or right hand is super simple and can be done easily. But if I was to do left foot or something else, it can result in expression errors. So we're going to keep it on the right hand. The connection is a slider from 0% to 100%. Like I said earlier, in my settings I have auto connect controllers. When this is applied, this connection is set to 100. At 100% it is saying, hey, this controller copy all the information from the target. So that's why it's in this position. If I was to set this to zero, it then does what its original layer is doing. So if its original layer had some position keyframes, for example, if the position was set to here, if it's set to zero, it's going to do exactly what this hand is doing. At 100, it then transfers into the null. I'm going to undo the movement of this, and we're going to set it back to 100%. You also can control the properties directly. So here we have the position. If I was to untick this, now it's saying get the position from the hand. If I was to say, okay, you know what, I want the position from the null, then tick it. Rotation is the same, it takes the rotation from the original property. Opacity takes the opacity from the null. And the effects, the effects takes the effects from the animation. So a quick example of this, if the hand is connected via the effects and we go on to the right hand then now the effects are being taken from here if I was then to reverse this the hand is now reversed but if you remember our hand wasn't reversed in the original controller so coming off this hand you'll see it will flick back to the original set it back to 100% you can turn this off so it goes back to the original effect or the new effects. I'm going to keep it as non reversed and you can see what's going on again. As you can see, our animation. Now, then, deleting one of these animations, like I said, is as simple as doesn't matter if you have anything selected or not. If you come into your Rigomator panel and you click on the character run because that's what's been applied. If I try to delete the character run half, for example, it will just give me an error and say that this animation has not been used. Come into the character run and click delete. This will then run through and delete the animation from my character and my character will be set to normal. So now I'm going to quickly show you as well using the character run half. So half the animation was actually half the time of the original animation because that was the selected keyframes that I used. I don't know how long this animation is, so I'm quite curious. My timeline is currently at 2 seconds. And what I want to do to find out this animation length is just click this marker icon over in the top left hand corner. This is going to set my work duration to the time of that animation. Now I know that the animation is this long. So, with my playhead at the same spot, I'm going to have the character run half and I'm going to click add nulls. This is going to go through and it's going to add that animation to my character. And then we're going to take a look at what it's done. So give it a few seconds to run through. And once that's finished, let's take a look. This animation is going to be dreadful because it is only half the animation. So you're going to have half a run. I'm going to open it up by pressing U on the keyboard. And as you can see, it's taken in all of the animation keyframes what I selected. And it's also set the timer to where it is. So if I was to play this, it's going to just loop through them over and over again. But as you can see, the animation is terrible because it's only half. If I was to extend this, of course, it is just looped again. But that's the animation. If I want to delete this, I don't have to select these. I can just click the character, run half, delete, and let it all be deleted off. And that is how we take an animation from a character and we apply it to a character and also how we delete the animation. You, if you've created the character run half, you can now delete this by using the minus button because I don't think that's going to be very helpful. But the character run is yours to use for any character you like. So if you have any other characters, give it a go, give it a test, play around, have some fun. It's a super powerful tool and I hope this tutorial helped you in understanding how you can extract animation and apply an animation to a character. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ping me.